Yo right, there everyone and welcome back to the channel where today I'll be doing another fan reaction of the fixtures that have happened during the weekend in the Premier League. I said I was going to make this a regular thing, hopefully to make a regular thing. I'm back once again on the channel to do just that. So for this one I won't be covering the um, Man City's um, Carbrow, Man City vs Aston Villa Carbrow Cup fixture. I'll be covering that in my next video but for now I'm just here to talk about the Premier League. And speaking of Carabao Cup, we was um Aston Villa was meant to face Sheffield United, and we was meant to face Arsenal. They were both postponed for the um, the fixture that we had at Wembley. So let's just dive straight into this. With Norwich one, Leicester nil. Schmeichel he had a similar game to the Man City one. He made a good couple good good saves, really good saves actually. Firing a few uh, saves over the crossbar, putting his hands out, big strong hands from him. He's a very good reliable keeper. But just like the City one, you could almost say it was a shame that they did go ahead and concede. Because Leicester, like I said before, are a very good team. they got very good players within their squad. But in this game, like I said, Smichael had a good uh, run of saves. Kalecci Iannaccio, he didn't have the best of games, to put it that way. There was one chance where he could have just put it away from, um, I think it was a deflection shot from Iosi Perez. And then it fell to Iki Ancho. The angle was a bit awkward. He, he was... His back was facing to the goal, so you do have to give him that. Overall, he could have probably done it a bit more better. Maybe instead of just smacking it, maybe just tuck it into the back corner just along the ground. Uh, and then there was an incident regarding handball where VIR had to intervene. That was with, uh, again, Iki Ancho. Like I said, he did not have the best of games during this match. Overall, out of 10, I'll probably give him a 6, being generous. Well, actually, the goal they did score was very good. It was a good uh, finesse shot. Outside of the box, I think it was, into the back of the net. But unfortunately, during the build-up and when the ball um, landed to his feet, firstly, it did bounce off his hand. That was clear and obvious. So, in that, in the rules, in the sense of the rules, if it's clear and obvious, it has to be given as a handball. There were moments where Norwich were playing good football despite the pressure from Leicester. Leicester, they're, they're ju they just are a good team. They've got the players, the capacity within the squad to have good pressure. But Norwich... Despite the fact they are bottom of the league, were playing brilliantly. They were playing so good. They probably, well, mm, looking back at the highlights, I don't think they, nah. A 1-0 win was probably good enough. I don't think they had the um, the capacity and the good style of play to go, go ahead and make it 2-0. But what a goal it was from Jamal Lewis. It was a brilliant cross from the right back, close up dribbling to one of the um, Leicester defenders. Cuts through, runs alongside, whips it over, it goes over everyone's head but falls to the feet of Jamal Lewis. He just smacks it and it just goes into the back of the net. It was a brilliant goal from from the lad. I think he was um his first goal for the club and I think first goal for his boyhood club. I think he came for the youth at Norwich. I don't really know to be honest. But overall, it was a very good goal and a very good game for Norwich City. And they were quite lucky to be honest to get that win. Now on to Palace versus Brighton. Palace won 1-0 at Brighton, at Brighton, yeah, Brighton Stadium. <laughs> Don't know why I got muddled up there. Brighton, they were making good runs during the game. They did have Palace on their toes a few points. Had a chance to, well, they could have probably equalised this game. Uh, like I said, they, were Palace, they had Palace on their toes, had them on the back foot. Moupier, is it? Moupier, their striker, their French striker. He had a good few chances. But apart from the one time where he decided to turn his back on the team. What I mean by that is Brighton, they had a corner. It was taken. Aaron's, I think it is. I think it was Aaron's. Cross takes the corner, goes in. Lewis done with the header. Looks like it's going in. Cleared off the line by Moupier. Now, that, that, was, that was a bit, bit of a... Um, hmm. Bit of a... Bit, <laughs> bit, yeah. It was a bit like that. Bit of a surprise. Let's put that, that's what I'm trying to look for. What I'm trying to say is that it was quite a surprise to see him do that. Probably wasn't intentional, but... Even Lewis Dunk was looking like, what are you doing, mate? Come on, what? why? Why has that just happened? But later on in the game, through that um, terrible attempt at goal, well, not a terrible attempt, it was just an unfortunate circumstances. Palace, they go on a good run. Ben Teke, who we've, a lot of us probably forgot when he first came on the Prem for Aston Villa. He was tearing it up, scoring so many goals. Now he's going like 65 appearances without scoring, which is, which is terrible for a striker. Absolutely awful. But it was a good play, good, sweet, 
clean as a sweet as a nut pass, I suppose you could say, from Benteke, lays it off to Jordan Ayew, who just tucks it into the back of the net. It was, like I said, a very good goal, but then Palace could have easily made it 2-0. I was surprised they didn't make it 2-0. There was a counter-attack with uh, Zaha and oh, I can't remember who else it was. It was probably Ayew. Let's just put it up. Let's just say that. It was Zaha and Ayew were making a good run. Ayu, he, bring, he um, gets the keeper attention, holds the ball really well, passes it to Zaha. The pass, I suppose you could say, was it two? It was either one of two things. Either the pass was too, had too much on it, or Zaha, his reactions just weren't quite on point to tuck it away. But either way, he takes it, misses an open goal, it hits the post. It was, it was a complete shock, really, that he managed to miss that sitter. But, like I said, Palace, they could have made it two. They probably couldn't even made it three goals. On to Brighton versus Chelsea at the Vitality Stadium where they drew two all. Brighton and Chelsea, the difference between their uh, battles are night and day. Brighton are in a relegation battle to try and avoid it. Chelsea are in a battle for top four. Ramsdale, he had a good couple of saves but was unfortunate through Alonso getting a double. Alonso, just like um, Jamal Lewis, it was really good to see a fullback getting forward, getting in on the... Um, on the attack and just having a good game overall. Willy Caballero was caught out in quite 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 badly really I suppose you could say. Well it wasn't really much better than well what Ramsdale wasn't really much better than him because like I said they both considered two goals. Like but Caballero was probably a bit more worse for wear. Chelsea well let's put it this way Chelsea themselves are in a bit of a stick in the mud I suppose you could say in terms of goalies. Kepper he is very bit he's been very inconsistent and he's got a bad attitude about him. Uh, Caballero, his good days are probably gone, I suppose you could say. He's a very good backup goalkeeper, just not a very good starter goalkeeper, let's put it that way. The same situation with Claudio Bravo, I suppose you could say. Well, there's no surprise about it, it just is true. And there's been rumours that apparently Chelsea have offered Kepa plus £25 million for Oblak. Now, Oblak would be a huge, absolutely massive upgrade for Chelsea, in my opinion. It's def it would definitely help them between the sticks. But would he actually cope with all the pressure within the Premier League? Because there's little teams like Southampton, West Ham, Crystal Palace that could definitely trouble, che trouble Chelsea. Especially when you consider for the fact that Chelsea are struggling in a sense with them where they don't have a standout player who for the last eight years, I think it was, seven, eight years, was in fact Eden Hazard. They don't have that anymore and you can clearly see they're struggling. There's not really been a standout player for Chelsea in my opinion, even though... Uh, what's his name? William. He is William Z. He's got the um, the number ten shirt. But to be honest, has he been playing it like a number ten? He can do. But can he be as reliable and as well easy to as much to rely on as as a player as Hazard? I don't think so, in my opinion. Moving on, Newcastle nil, Burnley nil. To be honest, not really much to report on that. Did not really watch the highlights. I just saw oh they drew one. They drew nil nil. I don't suppose there's really much to really look onto that. Let me know in the comments how they did. West Ham 3, Southampton 1. Tony Pulis said uh, before this game, there was a little interview, I suppose you could say, with, um, oh, I can't remember who it was. It was someone from uh, BBC interviewing um, Tony Pulis at the London Stadium, where he said every game is a big game, especially for these two clubs. Well, particularly for West Ham. Even they, um, they're in a relegation battle themselves. They are desperate to stay in the Prem. But the thing is, comparing them to Brighton, who are also in a similar position, not Brighton, uh, Bournemouth rather, who are in a similar position of trying to avoid relegation, West Ham, they should not, when you look at the players amongst their squad, they, do not, they should not be um, in the equation of, in the conversation even, of relegation. Uh, Fabianski. All right, he hasn't been the best, but you know what, whatever. You've got Fabianski, you've got Diop, their centre-half, he's very good. Uh, Haller, Forlands, who else? Antonio even, especially in this game. Antonio was very good. He probably could have got a double for West Ham. Uh, Yao Malenko, Felipe Anderson, they have got a very good, very, very good team. Uh, Declan Rice, England call-up. He is, they, they should not be in a relegation battle, let's put it that way. The standards seem to have dropped, it seems, I suppose you could say, at West Ham. On the other hand, with Southampton, they have bounced back massively. Well, in this game, they definitely didn't, but they were in a sort of battle to avoid relegation. And I think, last time I checked, they were 12 level points with Arsenal. And I think it was 12 or probably 10th, I can't quite remember. In this game, they were quite unfortunate. West Ham, they just 
went in, dug deep, and it very much did pay off. So Southampton conceded a goal via a sloppy pass, sloppy play, I suppose you could say, in their half. West Ham capitalised, put pressure on, they get the pass through to Darren uh, Bowen to get his first goal of the club, brought in from Hull, and his first goal in the Premier League, which is very good. Congrats to him. Uh, Southampton, they had a good goal, good build-up play with, I suppose, I don't know what you call it, uh, Oberfemi's goal. Was it, would you say it was like a chip or a finesse? I'd say it's sort of half and half in a sense, I suppose. Well, that's how I would call it anyway. But yeah, Southampton, they looked good. Looked like they could probably uh, see it off there at one all, I suppose you could say. Haller's goal, well, I was looking at Haller's goal, I wasn't too sure. It did seem a bit sort of, hmm, I'm in an iron sort of thing. Like, is that a clean goal? Did he win it correctly? Should VAR have intervened? I mean, we did see a sort of similar uh, scenario with uh, Liverpool versus Everton, the Merseyside derby, where um, Pickford tried to catch the ball when he was going to the crossbar. He probably could have left it and he probably would have dinked over. Origi, he capitalises, almost slams into Pickford and gets a goal. It was sort of similar with this scenario with Haller on McCarthy. It looks sort of like he... Um, headed it out of McCarthy's hands, but then tucked it away. But you know what? It wasn't called anything. No VAR. No um, no screaming from the crowd either, which was quite a surprise. Um, no ref involved in it. No cards. Nothing. No foul. So, and it was a good little tuck away as well. So fair, fair enough. Fair, it was all fair and square, and a very um, deserved goal, I suppose you could say, for West Ham. Now to their third goal, Antonio. Goal was very good. Very good pass. Very good build up. Headed. Ball headed down from Haller to Forlands. It looked like Forlands would have probably have just been offside, but he wasn't. Like I said, it was a very good pass. And then he makes a brilliant pass to Antonio, who tucks it away, takes a touch, and then tucks it very nicely away. With Forlands, I suppose you could probably say that he is too good for West Ham, how much of a quality player he can actually be. And they are very, very fortunate, to put it that way, for the position that they're in, to have a player who is on, who can be on top form, who can be brilliant he's only like 22 23 four lands he has got years and years to just get better and better and better now on to the bit which i've been waiting to talk about for so long well i'll say so long it was only a couple of days this happened but liverpool are not going unbeaten i can't be any more happier saying that congratulations to watford mr watford troy deeney helping out massively within the team Liverpool they did not look like a team I'm gonna be biased here I don't care but they did not look like a team that looked like they were European the best team in Europe they were sloppy they were terrible Allison was bang average at best within a, against a team which like uh, Bournemouth and West Ham and maybe Southampton on a bad day are in a relegation battle at Watford they're trying their absolute best to um, avoid relegation, I think they are, they're either uh, 17th or just above it, like 16th or something, uh, Watford after this game, I can't quite remember, but it was very good play, Watford played like this was a very important game, like Tony Pulis says, every game is a big game, this, that is an understatement, this was a monumental game for Watford to go ahead and win, Liverpool, I predicted, I was remember I was talking to my dad about it, and I said that this game for Liverpool could easily be a 5 or 6 nil win. And what a surprise it was. Looking on my phone, seeing on Google, Watford 3, Liverpool nil. I was screaming about it. I was like, what? You're joking. I mean, good. Good, let's put it that way. They need to be stopped. That 10-year-old lad who wrote, wrote into um, Jurgen Klopp, he's actually got his wish granted. All right, it may not be a Man United who won it, but still, he got his wish granted. Watford, they had good, good play. Saar, he, he probably he should have got a hat-trick, let's put it that way. He was very good, doing a lot of good pressure. Getting away from Van Dijk as well, who no one's ever dribbled past. Oh, best centre-half in the world. Well, a, a young lad called Saar, 23, has just left him for dead. Let's put it that way. Troy Deeney as well. Did he turn back the clock? His passes, his vision, his finish even. He should not have put that finish away. It was absolutely, it was our like Martial's goal against uh, Watford at um, Old Trafford. It was exactly the same, but so far out against supposedly the best keeper in the world, or 
Yeah, very biased sort of statement, I suppose you could say, from Liverpool fans. I'm not one, let's put it that way. But overall, Watford, they deserved it. Like I said, very good play. They probably could have won that 4-0. And Southampton, not Southampton, Liverpool. Could this be a, a time for them to bottle it? I mean, there is 10 more games to go. They could easily just bottle it and we could just come through and just clinch it. All right, it's not going to happen. Even if we win, it's still going to be 19 points clear. So, yeah, like I said, we are not going to um, have a chance of winning it. But imagine, imagine the scenes if it does happen. I'll be doing a, um, a Gary Neville and opening up a bottle of champagne myself. But that's where I'm going to leave it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. My next video will be discussing the um, Carabao Cup win for Man City versus uh, Aston Villa. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, drop a like. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you lot in a bizzle.